last fall, I had a health scare, um, and I realized that there were certain things about my health I couldn't change or that I couldn't um, do anything about, but that there were other things like healthy habits and um, weight management that I could. I was in a job that um, was very stressful, and I coped with that through food. I've always been very active, but I thought that if I ate unhealthy in the kitchen, I could work that off in the gym. Ever since starting the Daniel Plan, I feel like um, I have more energy and I feel younger. So initially, I started just by making food choices, better food choices. Once you get used to cutting out all the processed food, then you start tasting the food. You actually can taste the difference when they start putting so much sodium or all these other things in the food. You're like, oh. Eat a lot more uh, vegetables and, and organic food. I, I really learned about what organic and the, just the rainbow of, of foods that there are out there. I love to eat and I eat a lot. And so the biggest thing I learned was that I could eat the same amount, I just had to eat the right foods. Welcome to the Daniel Plan series on food, enjoying God's abundance. My name is Dee Eastman and I have the privilege of being your host. In this series, we hope to change your relationship with food so that you learn to love foods that actually love you back. Do you know that food literally has the power to heal us? It's the most potent tool we have to prevent and treat many of our chronic diseases. And as we'll see in this first session, eating real food means enjoying abundance, not deprivation. Your body is designed to respond best to real whole foods. We will look at many practical ways to incorporate more of these healing foods into your life, letting the good naturally crowd out the bad. Our teacher for this series is one of our founding doctors, Dr. Mark Hyman. He's a practicing family physician and internationally recognized educator in his field of functional medicine. He's also the founder of the Ultra Wellness Center, a medical editor for the Huffington Post, and the founding director for Cleveland's Clinic's Center for Functional Medicine. We are so incredibly honored to have him with us today. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, So whether you eat or whether you drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Let's join Mark Hyman and learn how real food can give you your life back so you can fully engage in all that God has for you. Dr. Hyman, it's so great to be with you today. Thank I'm you so much for joining so us. so happy to be here. And we're thrilled because this is an amazing study on enjoying God's abundance. And you have taught us all at the Daniel Plan to have a whole different relationship with food. So I can't wait to dive in on really how to learn to live an abundant life in this area of food. Absolutely. I love to eat. I love good food. I wouldn't want to be depriving myself of delicious, amazing food. And you know what? God has made the most amazing food on the planet. Nice. I always say we want to leave the food that man made and eat the food that God made because right. it makes it really simple. What am I talking about? Just real delicious, whole, fresh food. If it was made in a factory, you know. Maybe leave it out. Yeah. yeah. I always say, Michael Pollan says, if it was made in a plant, don't eat it. If it was grown on a plant, eat it. And the truth is that God has made some amazing, delicious foods, vegetables, fruits, spices, animal protein, nuts, seeds, delicious things we talked about in the Daniel Plan that most people have never discovered. And, and their palates have been hijacked by the food industry. Mm -hmm. Their brain chemistry has been hijacked. And so they don't even know what real food tastes like. So after you start the Daniel Plan, you begin to encounter the magic of God's creation in food and see actually what you can eat that tastes good and makes you feel good. I and then you that. can actually do good which is what life's about. Nice, I like that you said the magic of God's creation, that he actually made amazing food for us to eat. And it sounds like our palate actually changes once we get away from some of that factory food to actually enjoy the real taste of that and then feel better because of it. That's right, it's, it's you know, we don't realize how strong the food industry has actually created ingredients hmm. that have deliberately hijacked our taste buds hmm. and created cravings and addiction. And so it's very hard to think about eating, not eating all the processed foods and sugar and sodas and all the things we're used to eating. And we don't often connect how we feel to what we're eating. And the beauty of the Daniel Plan is it gives you an opportunity to realize that 
if you have what I call FLC syndrome, which is when you feel like crap, <laughs> then it might be related to what you're eating. Wait, the- FLC syndrome, I really like this. Okay, because that's the way a lot of us walk around. You barely get through the work day or get through parenting your kids and you get to dinner and you're ready to like, that couch is like calling your name. And we want people to feel better than that yeah. at the end of the day. Absolutely. You know, and the thing is most of us want to do better in our lives. We want to love better. We want to work better. We want to care for those around us better. Right. We want to be a contribution to our lives. We want to serve God. And how do you do that if you have FLC syndrome? You just want to lie around on the couch and eat Doritos and, and, and watch TV. But if you actually start to shift what you're eating, nice. people actually shift how they feel. Nice. And, that, and that's what the Daniel Plan's about. It's about giving you the opportunity to be able to serve God better by feeling good. If you nice. eat good, you feel good, and you can do good. Dr. Hyman, I love that you said that because we really want to be able to shift our food and then shift the way we feel. And in the Daniel Plan book, you orchestrated our plate. Really what we were planning our meals, what mm. type of food we should really wrap around. I'd love for you to walk through. Sure. You know, you know, see, so many people are confused about food. I'm sure you're confused about food. You hear different messages from the media, from different health agencies, from the government. So you throw up your hands and go, what do I eat? And it's really simple. When you look at the science, it all comes down to very simple principles. And that's why I created the Daniel Plan plate, which looks like this. 50% of it is non-starchy vegetables. And you know what? You get to eat as much as you want. There's no limitation on volume. If you want to have 40 cups of broccoli, go ahead, try it. You probably won't be able to do it, but you can eat as much as you want. So you can fill up on all these wonderful vegetables, which are filled with phytonutrients, plant chemicals that heal your body. They're filled with vitamins and minerals. They have plenty of fiber and they're delicious and they have all sorts of wonderful flavors. And then that's 50% of your plate and you can keep refilling it. It's unlimited refills on that side. And then on the other two uh, sections, 25% is protein and it should be healthy proteins. And it can be plant proteins or animal proteins. So plant proteins can be things like beans and nuts and seeds and tofu and tempeh. And healthy animal proteins can be whole eggs, not egg whites, but whole eggs. Fat is actually not the enemy here, sugar is. We wanna include healthy animal products, ones without hormones and antibiotics and pesticides and chemicals and heavy metals. So if you can, you know, eat the healthier versions, such as the organic or grass-fed versions. And if you can't, it's okay. Try to get just the antibiotic or hormone-free. And you can pick proteins that are delicious to eat and taste good and, and satisfy your palate. And then the other quarter of your plate should be a starchy vegetable, like a sweet potato, winter squash, or grains. And whole grains like rice or buckwheat or quinoa. And these are things that are full of fiber, full of protein, and also f- full of nutrients like B vitamins and minerals. So you combine the, the healthy proteins, the non-starchy vegetables or whole grains, and I don't mean whole grain flour, I mean whole grains, because white flour and wheat flour or whole wheat flour are pretty much the same in your body, even though it sounds different. And then unlimited non-starchy vegetables like broccoli, collards, asparagus, green beans, crunchy things, tomatoes, salad fixings, all these are delicious non-starchy vegetables and they're all listed as part of the Daniel Plan and in the Daniel Plan program. Great, I love the reminder of the plate. I think just to be sensitive to our audience, I think the thought of incorporating 50% of our plate of veggies can be a far reach for someone beginning. Do you have some tips on ways to incorporate vegetables? Oh, sure. You know, like I I usually make two or three side dishes of vegetables. So for example, my son makes cauliflower mashed potatoes. They're so good. You make a whole cauliflower, you boil it up, and then you mush it, and you can put uh, even a little bit of butter in it. Butter's not bad for you. Or you can put coconut oil in it, and you put garlic and salt, and you mash it up. It's still just like mashed potatoes, and it's really non-starchy. Or you can make broccoli with lemon and olive oil and salt, steam, very easy. Or my favorite is stir-fried greens, a little ginger, a little, little salt and olive oil, stir-fry in the pan two, three minutes, super simple. You can take like mushrooms, and you can salt them and put a little bit of olive oil and garlic on them, put them in the oven and roast them, delicious. So there's all sorts of simple ways that don't take time. You don't have to be a master chef. You just have to learn some simple cooking techniques. And the problem is most of us don't know how to cook. And so part of the Daniel Plan is learning how to care for your body and how to care for your soul in that way. And so simple cooking techniques are essential if you want to care and feed your human body. 
Nice, I like that. You know, um, for me, I have an Italian background, and so I think it was just a shift. You know, growing up, it was like the big plate of pasta and maybe a little salad on the yeah. side. Yeah. Well, this week, my husband and I and my daughter, we made a recipe that did have pasta in it. It was a bow tie brown rice pasta, but it was a little bit. Yeah. But in it, we added some... A little bit of feta cheese. We made our own um, sauce. Well, oh no! On the side, I made asparagus, mushrooms, onion. We added it all together, and yeah. it was so delicious. But the amount yeah. of pasta was pretty small. Yeah. Oh, and then we did a side of green beans and a salad. So you can still get some of your favorite foods. It's just incorporating some different ratios with those. Yeah. Really simple cooking techniques that Absolutely. we have in the book. We have tons of recipes to get you going. So as you embrace this plate of 50% vegetables, proteins, and whole grains, it really um, is actually much more approachable. It might sound like, oh, how could I do that? But little by little, and it tastes it can be so good. I, I, I like one of my favorite recipes that I make that like when I have no time and I want to really impress my friends and I want to have a delicious <laughs> meal, it, it's this. It's, it's really simple. I, I go and buy pre-washed arugula, which is like a, a nice full of nutrient green. I take some avocados and I slice them up. I throw some sliced tomatoes and I take fennel, which is actually a delicious crunchy vegetable that tastes like licorice and you chop it up and I put that all in a big platter and then I take some skirt steak or hanger steak I put it on the grill it cooks in like two or three minutes salt and pepper slice it up thin put it on top of the bed of greens and you have a steak salad and then you pour a little olive oil and balsamic vinegar on the top and it's the most amazing dish and people think you're a gourmet chef but it literally it took you 10 minutes. Nice. I'm going to impress my family with that one. That sounds pretty good. A little flank steak on the grill, a little salad. Right. So it actually can be a lot easier that we make it. So I, I like those suggestions. You know, another thing, too, on the side of veggies is we have tried a lot of different dips for our veggies, just mm -hmm. the raw ones, um, yeah. of making a fresh guacamole, a fresh yeah. salsa, yeah. Um, some fresh hummuses that you can either make yeah. or just buy at your local store. But those can make it really interesting. And even for our family, maybe we are putting together some dinner and while we're making it, we have those fresh veggies out and it's made everyone more accustomed that that's a great food to integrate and an easy way to do it as well. And here's something that I think is so important to eat for people to understand it, that we think about food as calories, that it's just energy to run your body and it doesn't really matter what you eat, if it's a thousand calories of cake or a thousand calories of salad or steak, or it doesn't matter, but it actually does matter to your body. And here's why, because food is information. It's not just calories. It's literally medicine. And it turns on genes. It improves your hormones if you eat the right food. It balances all sorts of protein functions in your body, affects your immune system, even changes whether your bacteria in your gut are healthy or not with every single bite. So literally with every bite you put on your fork, you have a chance to upgrade your biology, to upgrade your biological software and create health. And that's what the Daniel Plan is about. It's the science of creating health. And you know what? As a side effect, all these diseases go away. Dee and I were talking earlier that this gentleman went on the Daniel Plan, he lost 110 pounds, was on 15 medications. He ate food as his medicine, lost the weight, 110 pounds, and got off 15 medications and all his conditions went away. That's the power of food. It works faster, better, and is cheaper than any drug on the market. Amazing. That was an amazing story. And I think the biggest thing for me that I've loved about being with the Daniel Plan is these tr stories of transformation. Mm -hmm. There's hope. So if you feel a little stuck in this program, give it a chance. You know, we have a 40 day guide within our Daniel Plan book where Mark has laid out recipes for 40 days, you know, shows you how to eat starting with breakfast, regular eating every three to four hours, and overlying principles that will actually add to your energy and vitality in amazing ways. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a jump start, which is a 10 day detox, and it's powerful. And Dee was telling me earlier about a woman who runs a diabetes association, she was on insulin. She got off the insulin and off all her medications and reversed her diabetes simply by following the Daniel plan. That's how powerful this is. And you know what? Then she can serve her community. Then she can show up in her life and do the work she wants to do, can love better and connect better with her family and enjoy and be happy. Was Really at the end, that's what it's all about. Nice, I love that. Okay, I wanna go back to the plate. You said 50% veggies, the other two quadrants are 25% protein and um, healthy carbs. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about the role of fruit and yeah. also the best way to keep hydrated. Yeah, fruit is really cr critical. I mean, fruit is full of, of wonderful nutrients and berries. And you know, if you think of something dark or highly pigmented, a colorful, 
rainbow-like substance, that's where all God's amazing healing chemicals are called phytonutrients. So you want to eat darkly pigmented uh, fruits like blueberries and raspberries and blackberries and pomegranates and all these delicious apples and pears. And we have low glycemic fruits. If you eat a lot of grapes and pineapple, they're kind of sugary. You can have a little, but don't load up on those. You want to stick with the, the very low glycemic, high nutrient density fruits. And we talk about exactly what they are in the Daniel plan. You won't have to guess. Okay, hey, Dr. Hyman, as you're talking about fruit, can you really spell out what happens in that glycemic index and why it's important to keep our blood sugar regulated throughout yeah, the day? Absolutely. You know, Dee, one of the biggest problems we have is something I call diabesity. Many of you have never heard of diabesity, but it, what it means is that your blood sugar is out of balance and your body is storing belly fat. And it's the continuum of a little bit of blood sugar imbalance from prediabetes all the way to type 2 diabetes. And you know what? It affects one out of every to Americans. Wow. That's a lot of people. And it's all caused by the amount of sugar we're eating, which is about 152 pounds of sugar per person. And flour, which acts just like sugar, if not worse in your body, which actually is about 146 pounds per person. So when we're having these huge doses of sugar and flour, it raises our blood sugar, and that leads to prediabetes and insulin resistance. And it's the single biggest driver of heart attacks, strokes, cancer, diabetes, obviously, even dementia. They call it type 3 diabetes now. So we need to look at the quality of the food we're eating and make sure it's not raising our blood sugar. Obviously, sugary drinks like sodas do that. Lots of sugary fruits can do that too, like pineapple, for example, or melon or grapes, and uh, any flour products. So we want you to eat whole grains, but we don't want you to eat whole grain flours or like brown rice flour or whole wheat flour, these actually raise your blood sugar just like regular sugar. So it's not that you can't ever have sugar, but you wanna know what you're eating. 80% of the foods that we eat that are produced in factories have added sugar. They don't say that, but they have added sugar. And so we need to understand that if we add sugar to our food, it's fine. We just don't want corporations adding sugar to our food. And when we eat real whole fresh food, we don't have to worry about this sugar. Nice. Now, I also, when you were talking about some of your favorite foods, you mentioned a cauliflower, and it's fine to add butter. You, uh, mm. you also mentioned a saute that you're doing with a little olive, um, oil. Yeah, olive yeah. oil. So can you tell me about the role of um, healthy oils and which ones we should really be consuming? You know, we have had such a problem in America with fat phobia. We're afraid of fat. We think fat is a four-letter word. It's not. Fat is actually essential for your brain to function. It's essential for your cells to be built. It's essential for your body to work. In fact, cholesterol is what your hormones are made from, like testosterone. So you can't have happy sex drive if you don't have enough uh, fat in your diet. So we want the right fats. And what are they? There are things like olive oil, nuts and seeds, like almonds, pecans, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, all the good nuts and seeds, which are full of good fats, coconut, we think coconut's got saturated fat, but saturated fat, as we're learning, is not necessarily that bad for you. We want to eat healthy, good quality fats, so coconut butter. Even animal fats are not that bad. Omega-3 fats from, from fish are also wonderful and delicious. And if you look at the spectrum of fats in your diet, it's actually what makes food taste good. If you take out the fat and you take out the sugar, it tastes like cardboard. So you don't want to eat that. You want to add good quality fats that actually makes you feel full. And here's the secret about fat. Fat actually makes you thin. It turns on your metabolism. It prevents you from storing belly fat and it cuts your hunger. Whereas sugar increases belly fat, makes your metabolism slow down, and it actually makes you hungry. So it does all the opposite. So eating good quality fats is a key part of the Daniel plan and it'll help you stay healthy, feel full, and get thin. Nice. I love it because um, this has totally shifted my paradigm in the way I've eaten the last couple of years. And for me, if I'm um, having that slide in the afternoon and I'm a little bit hungry, I might go get a piece of fruit. But instead of just having a fruit on its own, like an apple, I'll put some almond butter on it. That's right. I'll put a few raw almonds, a few cashews, maybe right. a couple cranberries. And it's not a low calorie snack, but boy, do I feel satiated. It has right. essential oils in it for me, that healthy fat. So I feel like full all the way till dinner. It's a great way to do it. You don't have to be afraid of those fats. No. I like that you said fat actually makes you skinny. It really yeah. revs up your metabolism. So it's a wholly different way to shift our mindset around food. It's true. Yeah. I mean, the thing, the thing about fat, D, is that the word fat in our diet is the same as the word fat that's on our bodies. 
and it's it's just a mistake of English language. They really have nothing to do with each other. Interesting. You know, but we think they're the same. You eat fat, you get fat. And in fact, the reason America has gotten so fat is that we've been eating sugar and high carbs. The government told us to eat eight to 11 servings of bread, rice, cereal, and pasta a day, and we did. We started with breakfast cereals. Guess what? Most breakfast cereal is 75% sugar. It shouldn't be called breakfast, it should be called dessert. Okay, you've done a great job describing the whole plate. I love the examples. I feel like it makes it really practical for us to jump in. What about when it comes to the area of hydration and what we should drink as we're trying yeah. to change our lifestyle? Well, you know, we've been taught in America that we should not drink water, right? We should drink juice, we should drink soda, we should drink sweetened teas, we should drink sweetened coffees. I saw somebody today who had a, a uh, iced tea from a fast food restaurant that was a small, which was 20 ounces, and it had 15 teaspoons of sugar. She had no idea. She thought she was doing something good for herself. We go to the coffee shops and we buy these lattes, which are sweetened with a little mocha or vanilla or hazelnut. They often have you know, more sugar than a soda. So we're not aware of the amount of sugar we're drinking through liquid calories. And they're the single biggest cause of obesity and disease. So the simplest way to get healthy is to drink water, pure, clean water. Now you think, oh, I don't drink water. I've never drinking water. In fact, I went to this family that I was helping in Florida. This woman was 300 pounds. She had never drunken water. She only drank soda. And it was just stunning to me. I mean, like literally almost like six to 12 pack a day of soda. So when you start to shift your palate and you start to understand that water is what you're made of and that it's necessary to, to keep your body hydrated, you actually will feel better and you'll do so much better for your health. In fact, they found that people who drink two glasses of water before they eat have a dramatic weight loss reduction. So it's a weight loss strategy too. Great, and I think even with waters, we can try sparkling water, we can add fruit to that water oh, yeah. for a little variety. Absolutely. A few herbal teas are Absolutely. fine as well. Great. Lemon, squeeze a lemon. You can even put like a little bit of pomegranate juice in the bottom of your water and stir it up, or cranberry juice that's unsweetened in your water and it spark, sparks it up. Nice. Dr. Hyman, you have such amazing tips, so much insight. I'm so thankful that you've joined us today. As you launch into your groups, I hope you have a great time interacting about the Daniel Plan plate, about ways you can add these amazing foods into your diet. We encourage you to jump into our 40-day plan. Start this week by just flooding your refrigerator with the foods that Dr. Hyman's talked about, your pantry, some snacks in your backpack or at the office, so that you can actually live this abundant life that Dr. Hyman has described. We hope you have an amazing time as you interact this with your groups and have a great time this week as you incorporate the principles of the 40-day plan into your life.